I think there's this great confusion where people think if you're criticising someone or something that someone believes, you must be somehow a hater, you must be in some way unpleasant, and it must be down to a lack of empathy, a lack of sympathy, when in fact it can in fact be the mere opposite. You could be a person who is uh, very sympathetic to their view, to their life, what they've gone through, perhaps even what they believe on some level. Uh, you feel empathy for what they are, who they are. But you also recognise that you've learned things and you've walked in their shoes before. They were your own shoes, but a very similar path, if you will. And as a result, you've learned a thing or two along the road and you can say, well... I can see the mistakes they're making and perhaps if I talk about them, perhaps if I talk to them or share with people things to do with this kind of person, I can help people who perhaps are going in a, a direction perhaps they should not be going or could reconsider and you could make them rethink things in a very valuable way. But of course, if they're actually simply seeing what you're doing, they're seeing you as a critic and they see you then in the negative sense. They're not seeing the positive side of things where you're trying to say, hey, what you believe there is something I have experience with. And even if I didn't, I'm trying to prevent people from being so out there as you, so unproductive, so delusional, um, massive fantasist. If you're fighting against that, I see no sin. I see no error in trying to better your fellow human beings. It's not a question of hatred. It's a question well, it's a question of pity. And you can't really hate what you pity. You know, you empathise with them. You see a person who's there talking about all these conspiracy theories and radical conspiracy theories, and they're so far gone, they cannot think clearly. However, you can think perhaps a little bit more clearly in some ways because of your experience and what you've already gone through, what they may well go through in the future. And from your point of experience, you can basically say, well, what can we learn from this? And what might you be able to learn and progress, you know, through in your time? You might be old now, you might stick with your belief and dig yourself into a deeper trench. But in any case, the discussion about what is true and the importance of recognising the, well, the value in actually helping people to accept what is factually correct is quite important. They might be following a line of fantasy, and it might be initially some kind of spiritual fantasy, whether that's in religion or outside of religion, and they might well then engage with conspiracy theories because of their fantastic nature, because of the, their beliefs, because of what they accept as being real. And then they accept all sorts of things, any manifestation of, you know, ridiculous ideas. And as a result, of course, they can accept uh, conspiracy theories about reptilians and demons and all this kind of stuff. And it's not true. And it damages their life. It damages their personality. It damages their, their soul, in a manner of speaking, their, their core of who they are and what they are, how they live, how they progress, how they move forward, because they're locked into a fantasy world.